I'm Laura Ingram, and this is the Ingram Angle from Washington. At the end of our first week at 7 p.m., have you had fun? We have. Well, tonight we bring you yet another exclusive, the GOP lawmaker who received an endearing voicemail after voting against sex changes for minors. You big, fat-headed mother I can't wait to read your name in the obituary. Isn't that sweet? Well, we'll get to that a little later. But first, campaign by trials. That's the focus of tonight's angle. All right, it's happening again, and it's even worse than, let's say, six months ago, because now President Biden knows that we know that he knows he's losing it. Every time I hear hail to the chief, I turn around and say, where is he? <laughs> oh, I know who owns this place. Thank you. That bird, right, there, that, that pigeon. <laughs> I mean, of course, most voters would like to direct Biden off the stage permanently. And it's so bad that master politician Nancy Pelosi can't even keep a straight face on the subject. Age is a relative thing. Uh, it is, uh, uh, and I think this president, uh, we, our country is very well served by his leadership. He's a kid, but it's a kid. It's, <laughs> it is, uh, it's relative. He's, he's younger than I am, so I, uh, he's a kid to me as well, the president <laughs> is. Oh my gosh. Did they go to the Kamala Harris School of Laughing? But don't you miss Nancy as speaker? Well, Biden doesn't, because he thinks she still is. She's, oh, she's going to be my speaker her whole life, I think, my whole life. And uh, I want to say Nancy and her... Oh, and her there you are, <laughs> Nancy. Well, she's hiding behind that big guy. But seriously, given Biden's obvious and rapid decline, the Democrats know that they either need some astonishingly good luck in 2024 or some extra help from their friends. And they think they've found both. Now, check out the Republican primary calendar. It's kind of the usual stuff. The Iowa caucuses, January 15th. The New Hampshire primary, tentatively on the 23rd. Then Nevada's on February 6th, followed by South Carolina on the 24th. And then the big show, Super Tuesday on March 5th, where 15 states vote on the same day. But wait, about three weeks later, on March 25th, the campaign halts for Donald Trump. Because that's when prosecutors working with New York DA Alvin Bragg will be beginning opening arguments in the hush money case, charging 34 farcical felony counts of falsifying business records. These are felony crimes in New York State, no matter who you are. We cannot and will not normalize serious criminal conduct. Virtually everybody that has looked at this case, including rhinos and even hardcore Democrats, say there is no crime and that it should never have been brought. Yeah, why don't we try actually arresting people who are violent criminals in New York? Well, of course, after that wraps, when a few months have passed, Trump will have to stop his campaign again on May 20th, this time to defend himself in the federal criminal court from charges stemming from his retention of classified documents. Now, Lord knows how long this is going to take, uh, how many witnesses are going to be called, how many pretrial motions are going to be filed. And by the way, this isn't even accounting for what looks like a Trump indictment coming out of Fulton County, Georgia, which, uh, by the way, the indictment may be handed down next month. A report today that the president could face racketeering charges for alleged election interference. Now, again, who knows when that trial would take place, the summer of 2024, right before the convention? Talk about election interference. Absurd. Now, the regime media is going to cover all of this 24-7 with kind of an O.J. Simpson-style tabloid commentary. After all, it's historic. You know, during these riveting legal dramas, why would Biden, the president, need to answer for his record? Or campaign much at all, for that matter? We know how Biden's cheering section is going to react. There's never been the kind of rampant criminality and uh, and insanity that we saw in the in the Trump presidency. Republicans are going to be dealing with a guy that has four or five indictments against him. Is Trump going to all of a sudden come up with a new uh, policy that's going to all of a sudden take mm -hmm. those suburban voters in Philadelphia and make them forget January 6th and make them forget the possible four indictments? Every trend is starting to percolate in that direction that is pro-Biden. 
Now, it's obvious that the Democrats think the trials, once underway, are going to wound Trump. Now, that may be a fool's projection, but nevertheless, they've done their own work here, and they think Biden's best chance of winning will be if Trump is the GOP nominee. A new Monmouth poll, they hope, is an accurate reflection of voter sentiment, with Trump upside down, 63 to 36, unfavorable to favorable. Okay, but where's Biden's numbers? Well, that's nothing to write home about, if you even believe this poll. 55% disapprove of his job performance in the CNBC poll. And on the economy, the number one issue on voters' minds, he has a lame 37% approval rating. And to me, that seems way too high. Now, can you imagine where Biden's numbers would be if the press actually reported on then-Vice President Biden's alleged solicitation of $10 million in bribes from the Burisma CEO? Or if they covered the rank corruption at the Biden DOJ or FBI? Or if they really dug into Biden's retention of classified documents near the Corvette? Or were the slightest bit curious about who left the cocaine at the White House? Now, Biden would be so low in the polls that Democrats would force him off the ticket. But if all else fails, if the endless indictments of Trump don't do the job, Democrats could have another trick up their sleeve. And naturally, the CIA is involved. Remember, they're only here to protect the vote, of course. How are you feeling about election security in 2024? Something we take very seriously. I think the interagency cooperation on those issues is uh, a lot stronger than it was in 2016. Are you seeing like red warning lights though? The way in hindsight we should have before 2016? No, we're trying to anticipate a lot of those concerns right now so we don't get to the point of you know red warning lights. What is the CIA's role if the greatest threat to our security is our domestic politics? What we have tried to do is organize ourselves in a way where we can contribute to that better interagency coordination. Interagency coordination? Doesn't the CIA director, by the way, have more important things to do than go to the Aspen Institute? Well, does he mean interagency coordination to prevent Donald Trump or anyone who thinks like him from becoming president? Like, given what the FBI and the intel community did with the Mueller investigation, you can see why folks would wonder about that. Now, enter Ron DeSantis. It's no secret that the Florida governor has been struggling, trailing Trump by big margins and burning through cash. The media's pig pile on Trump has become a drumbeat against DeSantis as well, prompting his campaign to argue that this is because the Democrats see him as a greater threat for Biden to face. Nevertheless, it's clear that if DeSantis has a chance, he has to reverse perception. The Miami Herald is reporting that his support among voters with a college degree, we're talking about DeSantis here, who were key to his winning the nomination, they're leaving his campaign in droves. From 51% support in February uh, to 29% support now. That's a 22-point decline, the largest drop in a recent Quinnipiac survey. But as an investigation into, I don't know, Bud Light's ties to trans activist Dylan Mulvaney, the way to stem that bleed of college-educated voters? Well, that's what DeSantis announced yesterday. At the end of the day, there's got to be penalties for when you put business aside to focus on your social agenda at the expense of hardworking people. Well, it's Friday, so what the heck? I'm going to offer my free advice to both Trump and DeSantis. Both will probably be unhappy, but there you have it. As someone who's covered seven previous presidential campaigns and worked for President Reagan, I think it's time that both of you candidates remember a few things. First, to Governor DeSantis. The voters in Ohio and Arizona, Pennsylvania, they don't know you very well, but they don't want to hear a litany of Florida accomplishments at this point, as great as they are. They want to know that you're going to be able to defeat Biden on the issue that is number one, the economy. So talk about the economy. What are your specific solutions to protect American jobs and bring down the price of energy? Smile also, have fun out there. Don't be afraid to show your personality and ask the people what's on their minds. I promise you it will not be Disney or Bud Light. And as for President Trump, keep your eye on the prize, 270 electoral votes. Everything you say, everything you do should be geared to winning in the states you need to win. This should be a 50 state campaign for America. Attacking popular Republican governors or senators in battleground states is more than unwise. It's self-destructive. Why do it? Voters in a general election 
want to vote for a winner, not a whiner. So please, for the love of God, stop talking about 2020. That will not bring a single voter out to support you who didn't support you before. You need to grow the pot, not shrink it. Be magnanimous and be the elder statesman that Biden is not obviously capable of it. That will reassure people. And look, your policies worked before, they're going to work again. The Democrats are banking on these trials and they're banking on a distracted electorate to pull Biden over the finish line. Hey guys, let's not let them get away with that. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.